Alright, so for day 7, we're taking a look at Kurazuka, which was originally a novel, and then got turned into a manga, and then now we got this. And it's one of those stories that's actually based after real-life historical figures being Yoshitsune and Benki. I remember the first time I've seen these two names together was in the PS2 game Genji, and then later I found out that they were also in the Samurai Warrior games. So yeah, it's another one of those stories where it takes those two characters and does its own unique things with them. Where in this case, it's a post-apocalyptic horror. So with that said, let's begin with the story. So at first, it takes place in the 12th century, where you have Yoshitsune and uh, Benkei traveling together on a mountain. And eventually they find a house, which appears to be someone living there, and that person happens to be a female named Koromitsu. And she tells them that they can stay, but as long as they never go inside the room in the back. And with knowing that, I'm pretty sure we can take a guess what's gonna happen next, right? So eventually, Yoshitsune ends up looking inside the back, and she finds out that Koromitsu is actually drinking the blood of a dead body. So yeah, she is kind of like a vampire in many ways. So after that event, the house ends up getting attacked by the Red Army. And this is where you find out that Kuromitsu cannot die that easily. Because she's actually really old, but still says the same age, and there is a character who is constantly trying to look for her so that he can gain the immortality. But then our main character gets really badly injured, and the only way he can be saved is if uh, Kuromitsu drinks his blood, but therefore doing this also turns him to have the same powers. But just before he fully gets the immortal powers though, he ends up getting betrayed by Benki, who then cuts his head off. But then hundreds of years have passed, and eventually our main character wakes up with his head back on, and it turns out that he is now in a post-apocalyptic future. And just by the way, the Red Army that existed all those years ago is still a thing. And that they are trying to find Karamitsu and use her blood to use it for experimentations. So now our main character, which by the way he now refers to himself as Kuro, he's walking around town in unfamiliar territory for that everything is just so different to what he was used to before. But eventually he does run into an underground mercenary group called Hinawa, and he meets other characters within them being Rai, Kuwan, and Kararuta. And his main goal from here is that he is actually trying to look for Kuromitsu for that she is actually still alive somewhere in this world. And that pretty much sums up everything you need to know for basic stuff. So for now, let's get talking about the other stuff, like the animation. And the animation in this one is actually really good. So not only do I like the art style and character designs, but also I really do like the set pieces as well. It definitely has a very interesting look to it for being a post-apocalyptic world. And the animation flow looks good, and there is actually a lot of action scenes that are very flashy and just a lot of fun. Also, they're very gory as well. Although not nearly as gory as the next one that I have to take a look at in this feature, but still pretty gory for what it is. Also, this anime does use some 3D effects, and normally I'm not a fan of it when they do that, especially when they use like a shit ton of it and it looks bad and cheap. Well, in this case, I think they actually handled it pretty well. They actually blended it in quite nicely. So overall, I really don't have any complaints about the animation. I do think this is a pretty good looking one for the late 2000s animes. And now, as for the show's music, the music in this one is pretty good. There may not be a whole lot of atmospheric stuff in this one, but there is a lot of uh, really good music for the action scenes, which I do really like. And for most of the other scenes, I do find that most of the other music is pretty good, but nothing super memorable though, but it works good for this type. But I really do like the opening theme song of this one though. I do think it is actually really catchy and has some really cool beats to it. It has a very heavy static sound to it that I think is just kind of cool and interesting. But it is kind of tough to explain though, and maybe I didn't explain it the best, but that's what I get out of it, and I do like it personally. But overall, I would say that the music is pretty good. So now, as for the voice acting in this one, if you're gonna watch this one in English, all I can say is that it's actually kind of nice that I actually get to talk about an anime with good English voice acting in it again. Yeah, it seems like up until now, every anime that I've looked up to until this point in this feature have all had some pretty bad dubs. But this one, I can say for sure that I actually did really like it a lot. So our main character is voiced by Brad Swale, who is not only a great voice actor, but he also fit this role really well. And Kuramitsu is being played by Jancy Jude, who did do a pretty good job as her as well. 
And then you got other ones like Kelly Sheridan, Sam Vincent, Trevor Devil, Don Brown, Michael Dobson, and even Paul Dobson. Yeah, the Dobson brothers are in here. And finally, I'll mention is Jason Simpson. So, yeah, a pretty good cast if I say so myself. And I think the voice direction was really good for once. So yeah, it feels good to finally watch an anime in English where the voice acting is actually legit good. But of course, watching it in Japanese too, there's really no harm done with that either. So really, you can't go wrong with either of them. So now, as for my overall thoughts on Korazuka, is that this one was actually pretty enjoyable to me. I really liked it. So firstly, I thought the concept of it was really cool and interesting. And it was kind of a unique way to go from one time period to another one without using the simple yet complicated time travel method. I do like the world that it's in, I do like the two main characters, and of course, I also do like the fun action scenes. But as much as I do really enjoy this one, of course, it does have some things about it that I think could have been improved upon. For an example, I do find that the pacing of this one is pretty damn slow. Like, the show really does not pick up much until, like, the third episode. And there are some parts in the middle part that are also a little bit more on the slow burn side, and this is a 12 episode series, and sometimes when I was watching it, it felt like it was a lot longer than 12 episodes. Also to go inside with this is that I also found that there is a couple scenes in here that were a little bit on the confusing side at first. Although I will say, at least there was a really good payoff at the end of it all, at least for me personally, but I can see some people watching this in the middle of it and just giving up because of the fact that, you know, some scenes may not make the most sense at first, and also the fact that it's slow burn. And just one minor thing I want to mention, mostly for amusement, is that there's actually a scene where, like, the first time where Kuro is fighting against the soldiers that are attacking him, and w at one point, he pulls out a gun, starts shooting them all as if he's, like, a gun expert all of a sudden. And keep in mind, this is a guy that grew up in a time when they barely had any guns at all, so it just kind of doesn't make the most sense ever, but, I mean, hey, fuck logic. I mean, it's still fun. But other than these things though, I actually did really like this one, and I would say that it is one I would recommend if you are okay with slow burn animes that are not long. And I personally would consider it to be one of the more underrated animes that came out within the late 2000s. Although I would say that Skullman is still my favorite anime that I do consider to be underrated from that time period, but either way though, I still really like this one very much. And one last thing I will mention before I end this one for today is that if you paid attention and you heard what I said about the next one I'll be taking a look at is way more violent than this, well, you're damn right it is because the next one I'll be taking a look at is a series that I actually have talked about many times throughout my channel and now I finally get to review it. And I have a feeling you probably might know what it is, but well, just wait and see.